Good morning, everybody. It's Deborah Byrne from Deborah Byrne Psychology Services, uh, DB Psychology across social media. Um, this morning, I'm going to talk about uh, returning to work after mental health diagnosis. Now, the, the aspects I'm going to talk about this morning is going to actually be about preparation and preparing to go back to work. It's very important that you get these steps right um, and that you realise that you're the one in control. Nobody else is in control of this. Not your employer, not anybody else but you. Um, <clears throat> And I feel that preparation, if you get it right, it will lay the foundations for you having a much more smoother transition in work when you actually go back. Um, and it'll put, you know, it'll put safeguards in place um, to help stop a relapse or, uh, you know, minimize the chance of a relapse. So um, I know that uh, if you've had a mental health diagnosis, the first thing, you know, there's going to be a, a few things you're going to be thinking to yourself. Um, when you think about going back to work, uh, your self-esteem and your self-confidence is just going to be knocked to the ground. Um, you're going to start wondering, you know, am I still capable and competent enough to do this job? Uh, the answer is yes, you are. Um, whether you choose to actually go back to that job, it will, if it was too high a stress level, then you may decide, well, I'm OK, I can do this job, but it, it's not going to be good for me. That's going to be up to you and I would, I would um, you know, encourage you to uh, discuss all this with your GP and your, your psychologist or counsellor, whoever you're seeing. Um, there's a few other things that are going to come into your head, which is completely natural. And that is, are you going to be gossiped about? Um, you know, is the gossip going to be going around the office? Totally natural to have this these thoughts in your head. Um, are you going to be discriminated against? Will you be held back in your job? Will you, you know, miss out on promotions because of what has happened? <clears throat> Sorry. Will you actually be able to cope? That that's something I've just touched on there. Will you be able to cope in this job? Um, is it too stressful now for you? Um, it's it's got nothing to do with your, you know, how competent you are. But is it is it the job itself that maybe you need to review? Um, is it going to trigger a relapse then? You know, is this this is you know, is this a possibility? You've got to take, you know, you're going to have all these thoughts and you're going to have to take these things into consideration before you decide. Yeah, I'm 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 ready to go back to work. You should really be getting more comfortable with those questions and have some, you know, have worked them through with your counselor, with your psychologist before you actually go there. Um. As I said before, um, at the start, don't feel too pressurized to return to work. You're in control now, and I really think you need to be thinking about yourself first. You may be under pressure financially, but even taking a few extra weeks, um, you know, to uh, to think about is this the right job for me? Is this, you know, is there a way that I can, uh, maybe I can do, you know certain things in the future that's going to prevent me having a relapse um, and some of those things I would suggest is um, you know look ask see if your employer would be willing to do flexi hours job sharing um, and a phased return to work in fact um, is your job going to allow you to take time off uh, for a medical appointment you may have to continue with seeing your GP on a regular basis or a psychiatrist on a regular basis and um, you'll certainly probably have counseling on a regular basis you know are they going to be willing to do that during office hours during you know during work time hours whatever it is um, you're also um, going to have to think about um, whether you know you need a separate office if you're working in an office environment you might want to think well do i you know do i need a separate office from everybody else because that'll make me feel more comfortable or you know do i in fact need to leave the sep that a uh, separate office office if that's what you've had and you need to be down working with other people around you to make you feel more comfortable will your employer actually um support you um uh, during this time and, and making that transition to doing that will they actually accommodate you this is this is a reasonable adjustment is what it's called and I talk about a whole load of other reasonable adjustments in the blog so ha check them out and have a read down through them and see you know will my employer actually support you uh, to do this it's very important that that uh, that they do 
Do they offer a buddy or mentoring system? You may, you know, you may feel that just for a few weeks or a few months when you go back, you're feeling a little bit unsure of yourself. It's not somebody that's going to stand over you when you do your job. It's just somebody that will check in with you. Maybe your uh, employer, you know, your supervisor, they should really be checking in on you. Are you okay? Are the adjustments working? Are those reasonable adjustments working for you? They should be really doing that for you. But think about it beforehand. Are they going to offer me this? You know, and that and that these questions are going to take a conversation long before you ever go back to work with your employer. You're going to have to go in. You're going to have to talk to them, your supervisor and the HR manager is going to need to be involved. And it's it's really long before you go back to work that you do these. You ask these questions and find out the answer so you, you can make up your mind as to whether you want to want to go back to this particular job or whether you want to look for a different job. Um, the other thing I would suggest that you have that you maybe look and see do they have is having a place where you can go off and de-stress. Now, this can be uh, another room. It can be somewhere you can sit quietly, meditate. Uh, maybe you have to take medication during the day. Maybe you need half an hour or an hour afterwards. Now, they're going to allow you to take that time out to just sit and relax and de-stress when things get too much of the, you know, that you have that. And that, that shouldn't just be for you. Um, and I do go into that in, you know, into in the blog, I, I go into, you know, becoming an advocate for well-being in the workplace. Um, I make some points about that in the blog. Um, and if you check it out, you can I'm not going to go in now because my my key points today are all about preparation before you go back. Um, but, you know, being an advocate for mental health is is really, really important. And um, employers now are realizing that they they need to be need to be, you know, um, thinking about people's well-being and mental health, not just their physical health, but also their mental health. Now, more and more people are employers are coming on board with this. Um, so this idea of having a room, a separate room, uh, you know, a cup of coffee, just somewhere that you can relax, that people can go relax if they're meditating, slap on some earphones. You know, and somewhere it's really to chill out is important. Does your employer offer this for you? Will they be willing to offer this for you? Remember, it's not just going to be a benefit to you. It's going to be a benefit to every employee in that business. Um, basically, overall, in terms of, you know, pre going back to work, the points are that does your job promote your recovery? That's the one thing you really want to be discussing. Not just with your counsellor or your psychologist, but also with your employer. Will this, think about it, get your questions answered before you go back. Get yourself kept in the loop. When you feel you're well enough to think about going back to work, that's when you make contact with your, your colleagues, your friends and work. Hopefully they will have kept you kept in touch with you and they've kept you up to date with what's actually going on in work. And they'll have kept you in the loop. So you're up to date on what's going on. Um, so you're going to be clued in you know, as to you've had a meeting maybe with your employer. Um, you, you, you've, you know, you've given them an idea. OK, I won't be back for work for X amount of time. They know all this. You, you know, you, you've talked about this. You've talked about some of your questions that I've spoken about this morning um, and you're getting kept in the loop. OK, you're getting kept in loop. That's important. That really is important because when you have a mental illness and you aren't in work, you can tend to get very isolated. So it really would be of help helped you that you aren't getting or kept isolated um, from what's going on with your old friends and, and you know, keep keep meeting them, keep keep talking to them, have a chat, you know, once a week, you know, go out for a coffee or something with them Um uh, meet up with them at lunchtime or something. Um, it doesn't have to be in the building you worked in. If that makes you feel uncomfortable, it could be, it could be you know outside work. It's a good idea, good way of keeping in touch. Emails, great way of keeping in touch with people. But keeping in the loop is important. It really is important. Um, it'll also give you that that uh, you know idea. Are these people, these employers, are these people going to promote? my mental health recovery it's just the same as your physical recovery it really is all about uh you know promoting and helping you recover and preventing a relapse 
Um, so before you, when you've gotten to that stage, you, you know, you're thinking about going back to work. You've asked all these questions. So now you want to concentrate on keep getting the basics in place. You really want your basics as a second nature. So what I'm talking about is you have your medication. If you need medication, you're taking that on a regular basis. You're not having any um, adverse side effects. That's all settled down. You're meeting your counsellor, uh, you know, on a regular basis. You have all those appointments set up. You have the support of mental health team, if that's what you need, your psychiatrist, your psychologist, all that's your GP. Everybody's in place. Everything is ready. You need all that in place where you think, you know, before you actually go back to work. You also need to be doing your exercises, you know, getting out, getting some fresh air. You need to have, you know, your healthy eating in place. You need to have your meditation in place. You need to have all your stress reducing techniques in place um, so that you can very quickly de-stress at the end of a day. And all that should be now becoming second nature to you before you actually go back to work. Um, and as I've said, I've listed out a whole load of reasonable accommodations that your employer um, should be willing to make um, if they are there to help you and they value you as an employee. An employee. Now, I do go in, I'm, as I said at the start, I'm only talking about preparation. I'm not talking about the actual return to work. I do list out some really good tips and, and steps to take once you are back at work. There's about six of them there. I also talk about what happens if you don't want to go back to that job. What happens if it's too stressful? What happens if you, you decide, no, I, I want to go back to, uh, you know, I want to go back to education. If I want to go back to, uh, you know, uh, you know, I want to retrain completely. I've listed all that out at the end of the blog. I've, you know, the blog is very lengthy this week and I apologize, but there are some very valid points to be made there. And I think you need to think about what you want to do. This is all about you. As I said at the start, this is about you. You're in control and you need to feel that sense of control back again. A lot of the times when we have had a mental health problem, we feel completely out of control. Um, and, you know, it, it's time for us. Now it's time for us. It can be a blessing in disguise sometimes. Um, you're having depression or anxiety or whatever it is, PTSD or whatever it is that has gone on. It, it really can be a blessing in disguise sometimes. It's sometimes our body and our minds tell us, whoa, this is too much. It's time to step back. It's time to rethink our whole lives. And that's okay. That really is okay. So I'm going to finish there. And uh, you can check out the blog. It's at www.debrabarnpsychologyservices.com. Um, and I uh, hope you have a really good week. And I want to thank Nadine.